race number 18 of the Gatorade Cup Series, season number 13, heads to the Vermont International Speedway for the running of the Bass Pro Shops 400. The, the race of the chase is getting oh so close to chase time, and these drivers, all of them, are fighting to try and get in as the points are oh so close so far this season. On pole for today's race, 54, Sebastian Kukulon, Lewis Adam in second, the eight of Conrad Evans. Then in third place, it's Scott Gregory. Fourth place, Evan Hunter, his home track, and rank on the top five, Cole Luigi in the 42. Then in sixth, it's Riley Cresswell. Starting in seventh, all-star winner Jake Galloway. In eighth place, it's Logan Williams. In ninth, we have Cody Anderson. In the 14th, Marshall Burrow rounds out the top 10. Back by them with Riley Sampson, the 38, who's inside Jonathan Buford in the 18. Then there's the 77 of Nathan Baird, Anson and Charles Watt, who's inside the 96. Then there's the 51 of Colin Teague, and the 13, Anthony Manos, comes in second in the point standings, along with the 41, Justin Zidell, and the 21 of TJ Hanley. Then there's Nonagan Scott, the 66, and the 81 of Max Rossi. The next row, Jeff Bright and Eli Bright. Then we have Levi Schultz, the 12, and the 36 of Griffin Lynn, along with Luke Rainey, the 2, and the 17 of Roman Fenway. Then we have Ross McTrain and the 3 of Bronson Minnick, along with Keegan Thompson in the double zero Big Rose one last race out in Charlotte. Then there's Derek Hamill, 32, and 15, Samet Osgin, along with Caden Lynn and Brett Sierra. Then there's the 4 of John Smith and the 52 of Zachary Delello. Brandon Beal, the 62, the 22, Riley Spurley Tube. Then Max Anderson, the points leader, 53, Jay Rando. In the final row, 41st, Diego Pez, and starting 42nd, the 19 of Jay Jefferson. There's our 42 car field for racing here in Vermont, the best Pro Shops 400. Let's get on track for, for those most famous words in motorsports. Drivers, start your engines! Forty-two engines come to life here in Vermont as we're nearing chase time in the Gatorade Cup Series. After today, four races remain in the race of the chase. Eleven spots still available. The top 12 in the points separated by just 97 points. It's been a wild season, an unpredictable season in terms of the point standings, and it might change again after today. 42 laps in the Bass Pro Shots 400. Special Kukula and Conrad Evans in the front rows. They come down to take the green flag. It's waving in the wind, and we're underway for Vermont. To the inside for the lead, Chip Ganassi racing teammates Scott Gregory and Cole Luigi. Scott Gregory leading to turn three. Kukul on a nice run in the middle, but goes up the track. Here they come through three and four for the first time today. Scott Gregory on the inside trying to make it work as they drag racing like the first lap. Scott Gregory will do it from third starting spot. The one leads the first lap. Three wide for third. Jake Gowey forcing up the inside in the 11. He can make those aggressive moves because he's in the chase with his all-star victory. He doesn't have to worry about points at all. He's just here for a win. Galloway, the second, pressuring Scott Gregory. The fast speed's already at this racetrack, over 190 miles an hour. Scott Gregory leads off four. Galloway will pull low in front of Toyota teammate Cody Anderson. Scott Gregory maintains the lead in the one. Jake to the inside though and turns one into the preferred lane. Jake Galloway now out in front in Vermont. Cody Anderson follows her to second. Cole Luigi top to bottom on teammate Scott Gregory as Anderson looks low on Jake Galloway for the lead and turns three and four. Galloway able to maintain out in front. Cody Anderson will get in second. Third place, Cole Luigi gets by his teammate Scott Gregory. The front of the field spread out single file then three wide behind them. Coming up on the inside, the 41 Justin Zidell. 88 Eli Bright, who, who lost the uh, Pepsi 600 last race in a last corner pass from Bibby Ruiz. Almost four wide back here. Second in points, Anthony has lost the points lead in the Pepsi 600, trying to get back three wide on the bottom of the 13, moving forward. Just a few rows bottom of our points leader, Max Harrison, in the 43. Let's go back up to the front where a lead change has taken place. Cody Anderson back by Jake Galloway, but Galloway will get back by Cody Anderson. And now the 9-5 shuffles behind the 42 of Cole Luigi and maybe the 18 of Jonathan Buford. Buford trying to re, uh, regain his footing here as of late in the uh, Gatorade Cup Series. Wow, Galloway really rocketed into the corner, but Luigi's going to get a better exit in the 42. Gaining in the draft as well down these straightaways. 
You get behind the car in front, you get a nice toe off them and gain big time down the straights. Galway Luigi first and second. Third place, Jonathan Beaufort, Marshall Burrell to fourth. Battle up for sixth, Riley Cresswell inside of Evan Hunter as Cole Luigi looks for the lead and turns three and four. To the inside of Jake Galway and flies to the inside, keeping his foot in the gas all the way through. Cole Luigi not clear of Galway but pulls ahead to the start finish on the sixth lap led. Cole Luigi in the 14 will do it on the inside. Now Beefer has a run from third because they're side by side in front of him. He'll take it to the inside of teammate Jake Galloway. Behind three wide of the track goes, com or, or goes uh, Cody Anderson to the inside with Conrad Evans. In the middle, it's Evan Hunter. This is his home track, has Vermont on the hood of that car, looking to win it at the Vermont International Speedway. He's done a great job starting inside the top five, currently running inside the top ten. Kodluic continues to lead, but now a challenge for him. John to Beaver to the inside of the 18, side by side to turn number one. And now John DeBeeford's out in front of Vermont. Galway through to second again. The big thing about this uh, Vermont race is that we will have to have pit stops at some point in this race. At some stage, these drivers will have to pit, whether it be under yellow or under green. So if it stays green, expect them to come in just after the midway point. Buford leads in the 18. The battle is on for a second. Marshall Burroughs inside of Jake Galway, the 11, trying to cut him off. The 14 still trying to get down to the inside. And how about this? Three of the four Joe Gibbs cars are inside the top four. You have Buford leading it. Galway battling for second and third, and then Cresswell in fourth. So far, it's been a really good day for Toyota. Their only car, really, that's not up here is the 19 of Jay Jefferson. You have Cody Anderson also up here. You have the 96 of Anson and Charbonne, the 66 of Nonagan Scott. The only one not up here is Jay Jefferson to start back in the 42nd position. So, obviously, if he's going to get up here, it's going to take a while. And right now, he's done nice progress up to 27th in the 19 car. So, it's not like he's slouching, that's for sure. He's still trying to move his way up and join his Toyota teammates at the front. Marshall Burrell, the 14, moves out to the race seat, get by Jonathan Beaufort. Cresswell with a nice run off four, gets to the inside of the 14. They're going to drag race. The 10th lap is complete. 32 laps to go. Marshall Burrow leads, but Cresswell to his inside and turns one and two, bringing Conrad Evans, Evan Hunter, and Nonagan Scott with them. Here comes Evans with a run, a great rotation off the corner for the eight to the inside of the 20 of Cresswell. Three wide as Buford looks to go to the middle of the 14. Scott will go to the, the inside of Evan Hunter, puts the six in the middle. Up front, Evans a nice drive off of the corner, trying to beat Cresswell back around to lead the lap. It is door to door at the line. The 20 will do it on the outside, but the eight has the preferred lane to turn one. And Conrad Evans will move out in front. Nonagan's got the 66, will move up to second. Three wide behind them as Scott looks for the lead. Cole Luigi in the middle, down low, Bibby Ruiz, winner of the last race at Charlotte. Levi Schultz with him. Schultz looking for his first win since season number nine. And now Nonagan Scott moves out in front of Conrad Evans. The 66 will lead with 30 laps to go. This race flying by for sure, these fast speeds. My goodness, a lot of lead changes so far and with how this season has been, it's not surprising. We have seen points lead changes just about every race so far this season. It has not been consistent. One consistent driver at the top of the points. It has been many drivers that have had really, really good seasons. And as, as we mentioned at the start of the show, the top 12 in points are separated by 97 points. It may seem like a lot, but the race winner can get 185 points. You can gain about 140 odd points in one race. <laughs> that means that the top 12 are well within a race of each other in terms of the points, and even more than that within a race of each other. So it's been a crazy season so far. It's about for a second. Fenway trying to get inside of Scott Gregor, but now here comes Logan Williams, the 47 to the inside, a name we haven't mentioned all day long. Levi Schoen shuffled middle of three, down to the inside. Winner at Daytona, Riley Sampson moving forward. Nathan Baird, a scary crash in Charlotte. Baird inside the top 20, looking for a top 15 spot in the 77. Brandon Beal, the 62, is on the inside moving forward. Zydell in the middle of that. There goes Anthony S to the bottom of the 13. I don't see Max Erickson anywhere up here. Erickson further back. Jefferson trying to get inside the top 25 and top 20. The 43 of Max Erickson is way back in the field right here outside the top 35 currently in 36th he at this moment would lose the points into the 13 Fernandez but still lots of time left 
Now they get Scott's led a few laps straight, but now a challenge by Scott Gregory to the inside. The one looking for the lead. Scott Gregory led the opening lap of this race. Hasn't led since. But here he comes, and he'll lead this lap in the one car, bringing John Spieford back to the inside. Cody Anderson, Bibby Rose on the inside. Burrow as well. They've broken away from the three-wide battle. Nathan Barrow break his way inside the top ten in the 77. Just one race removed from his terrible crash on the back stretch in the Pepsi 600. And Anthony Hernandez making some nice progress. He's had a very, very good season. The most top tens by far of anyone is the 13 Fernandez so far this season. Looking at another one. I believe it would be his ninth top ten on the season. For the lead as we got Cody Anderson trying to block Burrow for third. For the lead, he got... John Beeford inside of Scott Gregory, and John Beeford moves back out in front here in Vermont. Cody Anderson moving up to second in the 95. We have Conrad Evans moving on the inside the eight, pushing Marshall Burrow forward. Jake Galloway finding his way back down the bottom, our all-star winner. Cody Anderson, the 95, clears the one of Scott Gregory for a second. It's now Toyota 1-2 at the front. TJ Hanley starting to come forward in the 21. Winner of the Brickyard earlier this season. Hasn't done much winning since then. Hasn't really done much since then. But a win today could rejuvenate his chase chances. As Galway, maybe tighter loose off the corner, but he went up the racetrack. And here comes Anson and Charbot to his inside. And there's Jay Jefferson, the one toy we haven't seen at the front here today. Jefferson inside the top 20, looking to get inside the top 15, flying by Samson and flying around Cole Luigi. The 19 has something to say. He started 42nd in this race. He's up inside the top 20, and we're not even halfway through. Cody Anderson moves out from the 9-5. He'll lead. Marshall Burrell in second. John to be for now third. Baird up to fourth, and Hernandez up to fifth. That 13, looking at the points lead back, came in 20 behind Max Anderson. It has been just an insane season in terms of the points, and if it can continue like this, what's it going to be like a few races from now when we get to Atlanta? How close will it be for the points lead? How close will it be for the top 10? How close will it be for a wild card spot? And what will the wild card picture look like? Because Jake Galloway right now taking up a wild card spot, even though he's not inside the top 20 in points because he won an all star race. He's in the chase no matter where he is in points. So right now he's taking up a wild card spot. Nathan Baird looking low for the second spot. Has to check up on the inside as the front two get away. Cody Anderson, John to Buford. Now the battle for third to the outside, Anthony Nez. To the inside, Nathan Baird. TJ Hanley trying to break his way inside the top five. Going for fifth on Marshall Burrell. Roman Fenway coming back. Bibby Rose looking to go back to back. Anson and Charles Buzz were halfway done with this race. Caution free so far. 21 laps to go. And pit stops are now going to be looming in the distance for these drivers. For the lead goes John to Buford on Cody Anderson to turns three and four. Anderson, a nice run through the middle, able to maintain. Hernandez has a nice run on to the 18 of Jonathan Beeford as Fenway tries to block off Ruiz behind those drivers. Hernandez, though, no drafting up on the inside, has to maintain in third for now. And really, with these pit stops coming up, these drivers want to try and position themselves up towards the top 10 so that when they have to make the pit stops, there's less traffic in front of them, they can get a clean entrance and a clean exit and not have any mistakes. Someone back here, it is your worst nightmare to have green flag pit stops if you're like Griffin, Lynn, Zachary DeLello, Luke Rainey. This is not something Luke needed. He came in 11th in points. His teammate Riley Spurge, who came in 10th in the points, but he's not doing much better in the 22. He's just inside the top three right now in 29th, 28th it is. Max Rossi that has had a uh, poor stretch of races. Rossi might fall outside the top 20 if his season doesn't turn around. He has two wins. That's a That'd be a big falter for the 81. Battle for second, Buford climbs the bank, Hernandez keeps it down on the white line, and the 13 Fernandez moves to second. Fenway for third, but Buford gets a nice run off the top of three and four, and actually crosses under to look inside the 13 to turn one for second again. He tried to get there, the 13 able to maintain for now. Now Ruiz moves up inside the top five, just got by TJ Hanley. Cole Luigi needs something to go right this season. He has two wins, but he's outside the top 20 in points. Luigi has run top 10 most of this day, if you can continue it up here, be a nice points day. Can they get to Cody Anderson? He's led a few straight laps now in the 95 and he's done a great job. The bout for a second. Beaford back inside Fernandez to turn one. But once again, pit stops are looming ahead. Three wide now for a second comes Roman Fenway and Cole Luigi back inside the top five in the 42. Led one of the opening laps and Fell back, but now moving back up inside the top five just by Roman Fenway. Actually shoot to the middle of the 17, the 13. An aggressive move for Cole Luigi. Galway to the inside, filling the hole, trying to get a nice run on corner exit. 
Looks like Fenway tried to block it to make sure they didn't get four wide there, and there's three wide for third, as the front two still Cody Anderson and Jonathan Buford. Oh, they're gonna be four wide behind. Hernandez is the second and points driver off the track, but backs out of that quickly. It was Hanley and Ruth that went to the middle of all that. Buford running Cody Anderson down to turns three and four. At the strike, 15 laps of racing to go for the lead. Buford is there on Cody Anderson, off of four. These two pull away. 15 laps to go in Vermont. Fenway clears in third. Galway fourth, fifth place up for grabs. TJ Hanley gets by Cole Luigi. Here comes Marshall Burrow for fifth as well. Anson and Trapois still up inside the top 10 with Nathan Baird. Hernandez now outside the top 10 in the 13. Buford for the lead. Anderson, nice run. We have pit stop starting. And that's where, you know, you have to be careful. It checks up the pack. Fenway and Galway are the first to come in. It kind of checked us on the pack. Oh, we got wrecked. Two teammates are in the inside wall. Thompson and Sierra. Thompson keeps it down to the inside. Sierra gets going again. The yellow is out. Now this is going to shake it up. These drivers are on pit road before the yellow came out. Some of them might fall lap down. As you can see, the front two have not taken the yellow yet. So they're still racing back around. If, if they had taken the yellow, those drivers would be fine. But now it's going to be a whole mess for them. Anderson, Buford lead them back around to the caution. No one has left pit road of the drivers that just came in. Fenway trying to leave. Galway trying to leave. How will this impact their race? Yeah, this is going to be interesting for sure. I mean, they're going to come out the grill to get back around. But the question is, are they going to be tail end now because of this? Is that maybe a good break for some of the drivers that were at the back of the pack that stayed out? They maybe got some track position here. It just depends on, you know, what what they deem. Are they going to be tail end of the lead lap? Or are they, are they going to be able to get waved around the pace car? They got to the yellow flag, so... You would have to think that maybe they get waved around here. But the race leaders that have not pitted under the green are coming in under the yellow. Let's see what these drivers do. Fenway's not in any hurry to get anywhere, so he might be stuck tail end now. And it looks like that might be, yeah, these drivers are going to be stuck tail end of the lead lap. So they have fallen a lap down. They'll now be tail end, and their chances at a win are basically dashed unless we get a quick yellow flag. So... The drivers that we're talking about, Fenway, Galloway, Baird, Jefferson, Comrade Evans, Cresswell, Jeff Bright, John Smith, Colin T, Griffin, Lynn, Logan Williams, and Max Rossi all are now tail end of the lead lap. But these drivers are in pit lane. Cody Anderson came in first, but will leave. Not first. Buford leaves out in front of him. Cole Luigi is going to leave in. Oh, he got hit by Kukul on the 42 spun around. And that's been the type of season for Cole Luigi. How bad is the damage is the question he's gotten going. Let's see where he cycles out. But the first car off the pit lane will be Jonathan Buford in the 18. But the caution is out. It's the Epitoma Hendrick season. Thompson and Sierra wreck together. Let's go see what happened. As some of the field had to check up for some of the drivers coming down the pit lane, Keegan Thompson, Brett Sierra are basically at the back of this big pack. Thompson trying to get down. Sierra behind him. Just can't check up in time on. Gets into his teammate Thompson. Spinning him hard into the inside wall. Sierra gets some damage off the 48 right there. He comes back up the track. Luckily for him, no one gets hit. Or no one hits Sierra. And right here, Thompson starting to come back up the racetrack. He kind of gasses to get back down low so that he doesn't come back into the surface. But it's just been the hard knock season for Hendrick Motorsports. Something like this has seemed like it ha it's happened in every race. There are cars wrecking together or being involved in the same crash. And this time, I mean, it was one of their cars wrecking another one of their cars so it's just been that type of season for Hendrick Motorsports and unfortunately it doesn't only hurt them it hurts these drivers that are on pit row which includes one of their teammates Jeff Bright all these guys are tail end of the lead lap basically out of a shot Cody Anderson came in first however he'll leave further back in the pack John the Buford out in front and the Bath Pro Shops wondering at Vermont will be with under 10 to go in this race Lights are out atop the pace car. We'll go Green Thunder 10 to go here in Vermont. It looks like Roman Fenway would be leading this race, but he is on the tail end of the lead lap in 31st. As it is 31st, I'm back to 42nd, all tail end. 30 cars technically on the lead lap. So Fenway, Galloway, Baird, Jefferson, Evans, Cresswell, Jeff Bright, John Smith, Teague, Griffin Lynn, 
Williams and Rossi are all tail end of the lead lap. Malo's drivers running up inside the top 10. Frank Creswell on up there running top 15 all day long. So that, that that's some big names that shuffled them back. So that's put some new drivers up inside the top 10. John Thieford, first car off pit road, will lead this race. His pick, his pick did a fine job on pit road. Koluji got clipped by Kukla on leaving pit road. Luigi spun around but able to maintain his second position. We'll see how that car is up to pace. Third place for TJ Henley. Co Cody Anderson led them into pit road. He's now back to fourth. In fifth place is Bibi Ruiz. Then Marshborough is sixth. Anson Trabois is seventh. Second in points, Hernandez in eighth. Scott Gregory ninth. And Eli Brighton up to tenth. Caden Lynn is now eleventh. Evan Hunter twelfth. Sprout of new, new fresh of breath in thirteenth. Fourteenth for Max Anderson. Yepes is fifteenth. So some drivers who had not mentioned all day long. They're now up inside the top fifteen because of this. Crazy pit cycle as we're back going in Vermont. The racers are in lap traffic with nine laps to go. This one's going to make it exciting. Where do the leaders go? Where do the lap cars go? And who can find their way through this traffic to get this lead? Beaufort's going on Rossi. Trying to get as many lap cars between he and second place as possible. Buford to the inside. Luigi a better arc into the corner trying to get low. Hanley goes high. Cody Aronson, the car has led the most laps today, moving to the inside for second. I have to wonder that 4 2 is a little bit damaged. Looks like it's not that great down the straightaway. Hanley might clear, and he does for second. Hanley will get in line and try to catch Jonathan Buford. Cody Aronson moves to third. Rue is now for fourth. The lap traffic is everywhere. Rossi's a lap down. Lynn's a lap down. Hanley looking to get to Buford for the lead. Off to three. He might look to the inside here. Three wide in front of the race leaders. And three wide by because Cody Anderson needs every spike he can get. He needs to get up here badly. He knows he has to maintain touch with the front two so he can get by the one. These guys lap drivers. Hanley for the lead in turns. One and two. He gets inside Buford. TJ Hanley out in front of Vermont. And Cody Anderson falls for the second. Less than 10 to go. TJ Hanley leads for the first time today. Anderson trying to maintain touch with them in second. He has to get by John Smith here. The four putting up a fight on the outside, but Anderson a nice run off four there. Hernandez trying to get distance between he and Max Anderson. TJ Lee trying to lap Logan Williams. He gets to his inside. He'll get to the inside Jeff Bright as well, but Cody Anderson also filters through on the inside. The front two have gotten away. They have three lap cars for them in third place, Jonathan Buford. Hanley protecting the bottom, going three wide around Colin Teague and Jake Galloway as Cody Anderson Trying to just stay with the 21, but Williams looking to the inside. Doesn't get there, though. Five laps to go. Yellow flag went on the race short. TJ Lee leads to turn one. Traffic everywhere for the race leaders. And right now, it is just these two cars. The battle for 13 is moving low on Jonathan Buford. They are so many cars back. Unless these two crash, no one else has a shot. Hanley moves to the middle. Aronson moves to the bottom. The leaders are in thick traffic. Three wide. And look at Hanley. If he can't get clear of Colin Teague, that might be the race winning move right there. He is clear of most of the traffic. Anderson's still stuck in the traffic. Anderson has to get by Colin Teague as quick as he can. Hope Jay Jefferson and Conrad Evans hold, hold this uh, 21 up. Because we're coming around to four to go. Time is running up for Cody Anderson. And the little checked up right there. Jefferson able to maintain out from him. That's what Cody Anderson wanted to see right there. To the inside. Can he stay down there to turn number one? Three laps to go in the Bass Pro Shop 400. Hanley has won many times. He's raced in every single race. Cody Anderson has never won in the Gatorade Cup Series. They run first and second. Hanley trying to lap Jefferson. Anderson looking to the outside. Now trying to get back to the inside of the 21. They all check up on the bottom. Two to go to the line. Here comes Fenway. He's going to go to the inside of the 9 5, though. That's not what Cody Anderson needed. Two laps to go. Cody's on the outside of TJ to turn one. The opposite of what the 9 5 needed right there. Oh, that might be it. And Anderson might lose second to Hernandez. Cole Luigi coming on the inside as well in the 42. And Eli Brights on outside the top five, it looks like. But up at the front, Hernandez is second, trying to get through John Smith to get to TJ Hanley. This will be the white flag lap for TJ, but it's not over for him. The 13 is a lead lap car behind him. The last lap at Vermont. Through one and two. Hernandez may need to make it through. And Hanley blocks it. Backstretch for the final time. Can Hernandez make a move on Hanley to turns three and four? 
Hanley does a nice job protecting. Hernandez trying to get a run off four. He gets to the back bumper, but no further. Down the front straight away. TJ Hanley will win at Vermont. Lap traffic filled ending, but they weren't slow, that's for sure. They played a huge role, and TJ Hanley finds a way to win this race his second of the season and maybe it propels himself into a chase position. Let's go see the finish results and the updated points. Here's how they finish in the Bass Pro Shops 400 at the Vermont International Speedway. One caution flight today for four laps and 13 lead changes. Nine different drivers led laps here in the Bass Pro Shops 400. The one out front at the right time and the one who got his way through the lap traffic the best, TJ Hanley, wins this race leading seven laps. They all came within the final 10 laps of this race. Anthony Hernandez was in pursuit there at the end. Has to sell for a second place, but once again, he now moves back into the point lead. So maybe for the 18th time this season, we've had a point lead change. Cody Anderson, you have to feel for him, led 13 laps. Most of anyone here today led a lot of them. In fact, I believe he led all of them before pit cycles. Then when pit stops happened, he fell back, but did a great job recovering, but lap traffic was not his friend today. He ends up in third. Cole Luigi, what he needed to do here today was finish top five. He gets fourth, and John Beefer had a really good point today in fifth. Scott Gregory ends up in sixth here today. Bibi Rowe is seventh. Eli Bright, maybe the one of the brightest points of the season for him. He gets eighth. Evan Hunter from a top five spot at his home track gets ninth. And Derek Hamill, never talked about him all day, but Hamill ends up in tenth. Caden Lynn also didn't start well, ends up in 11th. Yeah, Pez started back in the last row, ends up in 12th. Riley Sprue to 13th, Zachary Delella 14th, Samet Oskin 15th. Then Brandon Beal 16th, Max Anderson falls his second in points in 17th. Luke Rennie 18th, Ross McTrain 19th, and Jay Randall 20th. A lot of those names down there we did not mention all race long because they were at the back of the pack, but they gained so many spots when drivers came down here under the green. The yellow came out, then they got stuck at the tail end of the lead lap, so they gained about 10 spots off that, some of them. Burrow ends up in 21st from Paul Kukulon, 22nd. Four laps led for Nonagan Scott, but it results in a 27th for him. Sierra was off the pace with damage, finishes in 29th. Fenway and Evans actually passed Keegan Thompson as Fenway and Evans stayed on the lead lap, so they got one more lap. And in that lap, they passed Keegan for 30th and 31st. Keegan ends up in 32nd, so if there was one more lap, the race series would have had a slow car of Giga Thompson to deal with. And 33rd on down, caught in the pit cycles, one lap down under the green flag. Let's now go see the points. Four racers remain until we get to the chase. Here are the point standings. Anthony Nett is now back out on top. Nine top tens this season. He's finished top ten half the races. He leads by 35 points over Max Anderson, who falls to second. John Thibiford now back up to third. Bibi Ruiz in fourth. And Nongan Scott completes the top five in the 66. Anson and Charbois right now in 6th, Jay Brando 7th, Riley Spurrier to 8th, Caden Lynn 9th, and Evan Hunter, the final spot inside the top 10. Currently the top 6 in points still within 100 points of each other, the top 10 within 120 points of each other, the top 13 within one race of the points lead. Right now the two wildcard spots, Max Rossi in 16th, and obviously Jake Galloway, the all-star win, he's not inside the top 20 in points. Galloway though still taking up one of the wildcard spots. You have to feel for Luke Rainey, still just outside the top 10, 11th. That's where he's been most of the season. But it's still very, very close. I mean, look at 6th place, Anson and Charlbaugh. Even look at 5th place, not against Scott. 2,010 points. Luke Rainey's 11th has 1979. You do the math, that's 31 points. That's not a lot between 5th and 11th. And you even look at Kukulon and Sampson. They're all very close as well. They have a nice gap over 14th place Roman Fenway. And those drivers like Sampson and Fenway, they need to either break their way inside the top 10 in points or get another win. Because right now, multiple wins looks like it's going to be higher than a wild card spot. Because Rossi with two wins right now in 16th. They also have drivers like TJ Henley in 22nd and Colucci in 24th, both with multiple victories. If they get up there inside the top 20, they have a shot. Can Oz can get another win against the top 20? Jake Galloway's down 29th, but he doesn't, worry, he doesn't have to worry about that because he's in the All-Star race no matter what. Keegan Thompson's chase chances may have just been dashed here today. 39th in points for him with that victory at Texas World. That's the only bright spot for Hunting Motorsports so far this season. 18 races through, four races remain until the chase. Next one, we're going road course racing at the Road America Raceway for the Speed Code 330. I'll see you guys then.